Hello everybody, this is Warlord. In this tutorial, we're going to look at creating custom actor groups, particularly base groups and how to use those base groups to create a preset like I'm dragging in here. And you will notice I will go up to the top to the drop down and there are five different bases in there. We're going to create three of those five today. None of it's very difficult. And all of these have ran randomization options once you bring them in. And that's the great thing about actor groups. They're very, very versatile. As you'll see here, I have dragged in one group uh, that's a gun group with some props. And also, of course, some different uh, soldiers and different poses and things are all animated. Now I'm going to go in and pick another base out of that same preset. And it's going to be just soldiers and sandbags, basically. And then I'm going to move it over. And position it with the other. All this is already animated, and you'll see how to do this. It's not difficult. You don't have to worry about looping animations or anything like that. But basically what we do is we create the base, and then we create the preset using the bases that we created. So you can see where you can make pretty genre-specific bases if you needed to, or science fiction, you know, things like that. Now, as you can see, I've already loaded in three different bases from the same preset. I'll move it over here to where it's positioned a little better. And I've already also uh, pre-positioned the same preset in several different uh, bases. Plus a couple of random groups. The soldiers that are standing are just random groups, which we'll create. And you can see here that it makes a pretty quick battlefield or emplacement. And this is probably one of the simplest tools that you can learn to use. Let me restore the lighting here a little bit. Now, we can see some of the action from here, but it's not real good. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to an animated camera. So you can watch these bases drop down. And then you can see the variations of the same preset. Just five base groups were created. And then it didn't take much more than 30 seconds or a minute to create the preset. You just add those bases and save out. And they are animated, so you don't have to worry about looping. You just add an anim a motion to it. And what this is going to do is going to make for a rapid deployment of different genre groups and things like that. We're going to go to Create, Create Actor Group, Base Group. And then from off screen, I'm going to start dragging in the props. And this is just a sandbag prop. And then I'm going to drag in some low-res characters after I get through lining this up. And these characters were uh, optimized and decimated in Character Creator 4. And I'm not going to be real concerned about placement right now. Uh, I'm just going to show you the concept of how to do this so we can move along. Besides, you can come in here anyway and edit this, which I'll also show you in the process. But what you want to do is drag in all your characters and the animations that you want to go with it. And I just have all this open in Explorer windows, so I don't have to jump back and forth on the content manager and things. And so that's all I'm doing. Don't worry about looping it or anything. And just come in and get your motions done. And then you want to save them. And what you're actually doing is saving a group into the uh, content manager. Or the smart manager, I should say. Smart gallery. And now we have it saved. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to delete it. There's our group. I'm just going to load it. Now this base will always be the same when you load it. That's why it's called a base. You can use it. But you'll see later we're going to use it as a base for other things. So now I'm going to go to create. Do the same thing. This time I'm going to open it this way instead of dragging and dropping it. and you'll notice that it will rebuild everything 
And this is how you can come in and make modifications, add props, uh, a few things like that. Before we go any further, I need to explain why I'm not using these tags. First, it's so we can move on. But second, it's also because we're just using male characters with uh, male motions. But this is where you would put in something like uh, adult male, adult female, uh, male child, female child. And uh, where you would do things like that just so that the system can identify what it's working with. I'm going to reopen it again so we can go in and edit it and make some of those modifications. So it's rebuilding it. Just remember to keep this window open. Don't close it. Because you have to save anyway. And then this is where you can drag in other props. Uh, move them. You know, just do general editing of your scene. Then you just save it again. And now you have another base. And as you can see, it just loads right up just like the others do. So remember, you can load it either uh, drag and drop if you're going to use it, or go ahead and open it through the create group window if you're going to edit it. Once again, I'm going to reopen that group, the group we just made, so I can modify it further and save it out as another group. And in this case, I'll bring in some extra props. And one thing I found is you can't duplicate when you're doing this. You just have to drag in the props. So instead of just duplicating this uh, field piece, I'll just drag in two more versions of it. And you can start to see the versatility here, how you just work off one base group to create another. And of course you can make many unique base groups too. But in an application like this, a uh, military type uh, applicant, and it sure makes it easy to fill a battlefield. And again, these are just 800 kilobyte uh, soldiers, 800 kilobyte characters. And so I'm just repositioning it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time there. And then you just save it again, either uh, in a new name or over the other one. But I would do this in a new name so you'd have a new group. And now we have three different groups that we've created in no time. What you're seeing here is just drag and drop of the three groups I created, uh, plus the group I'm dropping in now that I created earlier. It was not part of, of this tutorial. But just showing you how quick it is, even with bases, just to make this many bases. While these are perfectly usable, we can also turn them into something that we can randomize after we drag and drop them in. From here, we can move on to presets, and you'll see why these bases are very important. Now let's take a look at what's so great about presets. I'm just going to go in, and this time I'm going to select preset, and I'm going to add every one that says base on here. Because all these are bases that I've either made in this tutorial or just before the tutorial. Now we can go ahead and save this out as a preset. Which I've already done in a preset folder. But in this case I'll just call it preset or preset 1. You can name it something more appropriate. Close it out when you get finished with it. And now, when you drag in the preset, there'll be a drop-down menu at the top of the pop-up box 
that will allow you to select all those bases that were drug in. Now in order to see them, you'll have to actually press randomize. And you can see what I'm talking about. Back up a little here. But all those bases that we just created are now in this one preset. And they can be randomized. You can also, where here I'm randomizing each group, you can also randomize within the group. So as you can see, there's a, a lot of possibilities for making custom actor groups. And it gives you a lot of versatility. And it's not rocket science creating it either. So let's go to create, create actor group, pick random. I'm going to show you what I've been working with. It's just an explorer window with these low poly soldiers. I'm going to drag those into the actor part. Then I'm going to grab some motions that I have off screen, drag those into the motion part. And now those actors that I just showed you, I'm going to place them in the screen where I want them to be, a relative location of where I want them to be within this random group. And what this will do is use a combination of the actor pool and the motion pool to random that, excuse me, randomize this group when you drag it back in. So right now all we're doing basically is setting it up for location. I'll fine tune it a little here and then we're ready to save this as a random group with an appropriate file name I just call it Fireteam Fireteam Random now we've got it saved close out that window let me clear out the workspace and then we're going to drag and drop this random group in Now you notice something different with this particular army, and that is the fact that before I had this uh, turned off where it says custom actor groups. So it was only sourcing from within the sources I was giving it. If you get this, you need to go and turn that off or just play with it so you can see how it works. That's in preferences. We can still use this group. We're just going to randomize it and make sure we just stick within the sources we've given it. And it will randomize it back to the soldiers, and we can randomize the motions within the group. So that makes it a, a very, per, very versatile group. Anyway, I hope this helps.